Whiskers simplified it down to a script. So let's just check this out. So to create a new Hasso SVM in Proxmox with the latest version, run the following in an SSH session or the console from Proxmox interface. Okay, just run that, huh? And then what happens? After the script completes, click on the new VM. The script will tell you the ID. Click on hardware tab for VM and change the memory and processor settings to what you desire. And the hard disk uh, can be expanded by clicking on it and click on the resize button above. Network MAC address can be changed, selecting network device and click edit above. Once all changes have been made, click start. To get to the DHCP address assigned to the VM, open the console after the VM has started. When the message slowed down, press enter a couple of times and you'll see the following. So look at this, he even did, my gosh, this guy's amazing. Using root, no password is requested. Then has prompt, type login, you should see prompt, then this. Look at the name, it looks like this. You'll the name following by an IP address. Your IP address will be listed after that, holy cow. All right, so anyways, let's run this script, guys. Okay, so here we got Proxmox, right? And he said, go here. We need to go to a console. Is that shell? That should do it, right? I don't see why not. Okay, let's run it and see. What's the worst thing that could happen? <laughs> all right, so we're just going to copy all that. Paste that sucker in here. See what happens. Oh, it's working. Holy cow. It's working. Oh, look, it's done. Wow. Completed successfully. New VM ID is 105. Oh, there it is. Oh, my goodness. That was that fast. Wow. Okay. After the script, click on the VM. Click hardware to change the memory and processor settings and hard disk. Expand by clicking on it. Okay. Okay. So we can do this. We can give it... Uh, 20, is it 2048? I think so, right? And then processors, uh, we can get to two, two processors, one socket, two cores. Okay. Hard disk. Oh, resize disk. Aha. Gigabyte. Uh, 32. Oh, it added it. <clears throat> so we're going to go minus six. <laughs> Can we do that? No. Crap. <laughs> so it's 38 gigabytes. Yeah, whatever. Because it doesn't really matter. Okay, so then what else do we need to do? Um, the map, you can change the MAC address if you want to. Uh, click edit. Once it changes me, click start. Okay. Uh, we don't need to change the MAC address. We'll leave it. So I think everything else is okay. And so now we're just going to hit start. And then we should be able to hit the console and watch this sucker do its magic. I can't believe this. Whiskers, you are a stud, dude. You are a stud. Look how easy this is. Proxmox over VirtualBox. Yes, Brian. That is what we're finding out. Proxmox is amazing. What Proxmox uh, system did I install? Is that what you mean, Chris? I installed this uh, Proxmox on, um, on my Nook. On the Nook. So it's just a... Um, I just put a Proxmox on a USB stick, put it in, fired it up, you have to plug in a keyboard and monitor to it to get it started. Anyways, and then once that's done, you um, you have Proxmox installed, and then you can access it. It sets up a web server. You can just ask, access it through the through another computer, and you're headless at that point. And then you just start installing virtual machines. And with one line, we just installed a home assistant. What's so special about it? It is super lean. Okay, so there we go. Has I login? All right, let's go back to Whiskers Instrucciones. Sometimes you can make Spanish words just by making them sound Spanish. <laughs> okay, so back to this. What were we going to do? Oh, yeah. We had to do um, the HasOS login right here. Okay, and then uh, HasOS login, just root, right? Okay, and then you're going to get this Has thing. You type login. Mark was trying to get me to do this last night, but I think this was the part we were missing. When you see, uh, when you see the that prompt then you just type this control v nope i can't right click it darn it okay i have to type it in ls space dash l space sys class net sweet okay look for a name that looks like ian okay and then the part right after inet there's my address 47 Okay, 
So now we go here. We go four seven, eight one two three. Yes! Oh my gosh, that was fantastic. Way to go, Whiskers. And then now from there, it's just, you know, you're, you're, go you're golden. You got your HASS.io install, ready to go. Oh man. So if, uh, if I want to run HASS.io, including add-ons, I have to run a virtual machine or Pi? Uh, no, Mark, you can install, you can install HASS.io just on a machine as the operating system. And, and that's fine. And just, that's what you do on a Pi. So you can install it on any machine, uh, pretty much, I think, guys, right? I mean, maybe there's some exceptions, but if you had an old computer or if you wanted to put it on the Nook, the reason to do it as a virtual machine is if you, because it doesn't use a ton of resources. So for, for me, I have the Nook. The, this Nook I have is pretty strong, pretty powerful, and it's got plenty of capacity to run a lot of other things. So I don't want to run just Home Assistant. I want to run Home Assistant and then have the ability to run other stuff. And having it as a virtual machine lets you do things like this, where you could just really quickly install HASIO, you know, another instance of HASIO and, you know, tinker with it or run some other version of Linux or run Windows or something else on the same computer. But Proxmox makes making these virtual machines about as easy as I've seen. And Proxmox also runs Linux containers. That's right. Well, there's Proxmox, guys. I mean, that was super simple. You want to do it again? <laughs> you don't have to look at your router. You don't have to do anything. You just run what he says here, and he makes it so simple. And it downloads and installs the latest HASIO. And uh, with those couple other lines right here, you get your IP address. You can just type into your browser, and off you go. Done. What's the best method to install HASIO on a Nook user error? Oh, have I got a great idea for you. <laughs> well, that's what we just did. Depends on what you want to do, user error. But what, what we've been talking about is using Proxmox as your, your OS, your operating system on your Nook. So, you know, just go through, go to Proxmox, get the installation instructions, and it, it's pretty straightforward. Put a USB stick, turn it on, it goes. Once you've got Proxmox installed, then uh, you just do what we just did, man. That is the easiest thing to do. Um, from right here, you can just, from, from this uh, shell, so Proxmox here, once you install, you'll have this screen uh, that you can get to, Proxmox, shell, and then you just follow this, follow these instructions. Copy this script right here, paste it right here, and then it'll install, it'll be ready to go. You, it tells you what to do here. You can add some resources. Um, we just did it on this stream a few minutes ago, so you can go right back to it and check it out. <laughs> <laughs> will Proxmox give you access to the USB ports for ESP Home? I'm sure it will, but I haven't tried it. Should we try it right now? I like my jammies? You guys didn't think I wore pants, right? <laughs> okay, so I've got here an ESP32 dev board. ESP32 dev kit. Need a cable. Okay, I'm going to plug this in in the closet. One sec. Add the device using the hardware tab in the VM. Okay, so let's go to my real HASIO and under hardware and you go to add USB device, spice port, choose device. And that's probably it right there, isn't it? It's got to be. Oh, the, so that's a port. So I could pick the port if I wanted. Okay, cool. Use USB 3. Okay. Either way, right? So there it is. Pick the device. Add. Any reason why it's red? It's red because the change hasn't been committed. You have to reboot the VM for it to apply. Oh, okay. Thank you. Okay, so shut that down. Then we'll reboot it. Okay. And then we're going to start. We'll just see how fast it starts. There it is. There it is. All right, anyways, but it recognized it, so that's what's important. So anyways, we did what we needed to do as far as that goes. Somebody asked about USB. Yes, USB works. I'm not going to go through trying to set up a, a new ESP home. Um, only problem with Hyper-V is, is no Bluetooth password through. Okay, you know what? Let's, look, let's go back here. That's a good question. I bet you there's probably, is there Bluetooth? How do you do Bluetooth pass through on this 
If it's connected to the PCI bus, then you would have to do a little work to find the ID, but you can pass through any PCI or USB device. So if you had a USB, if you had a Bluetooth USB dongle, that would work. Or if it's built in and it's on the PCI bus, then you'd have to find it um, here. But, you know, I don't know if anything's on there or not. Let's see. HCI, is that the one? This one. HECI number one. You think that's it? Here's this is the power of Proxmox. Is there's doesn't seem to be a lot of limits. You can it'll let you do pretty much anything. First time every time always works. William Merrill, nice dog too. All right, fellas, you you guys are today's sticker winners. Wait, Whiskers? That's you? Yes, Whiskers won the stickers. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Man, you deserve it. You get an extra extra special pack of, of stickers for that. Thanks for your help Hi, today, man. As always, As always thanks, thanks for watching. watching. Until next time, adios. adios. <laughs>